Hello, in this tutorial we're going to draw a sprite on the screen and to do this we're going to make use of some assets. In particular we're going to use a ship sprite. I want to draw this graphics on the screen so I'm going to need to modify my shaders and I'm also going to need to import this asset and we're going to have to use a class for the sprite so that we can draw it on the screen. Now I've already written the sprite class for you and I've already written these shaders and I'm just going to import these and make use of them. So the first thing we're going to want to do is modify our Starshooter project to include a new folder into which I'll place all of the assets and as we further develop this game we're going to include more and more graphics. So this is easy enough you just right click on the Starshooter project make sure you don't click on the solution but you actually click on the project itself so right click on that and we're going to add click on add and then click new folder. I'm going to call this assets. And what we're going to do is into this folder we're going to place the graphics that we need. Okay, so I've actually got this open in a window here and you can see inside of my documents projects folder in the star shooter, I'm going to open up this project and I've now got this assets folder. Okay? So what I'm going to do is open this up and right now there's nothing in there. But I'm going to take this player ship that I have, this PNG, and I'm going to copy it up into there. So now my Starshooter Project Assets folder contains this player ship, and I'm doing this all at the file system level. So this is just straight up Windows. It, it has nothing to do with the actual PlayStation Mobile SDK. But right now, I'm going to come back into my PlayStation Mobile Studio, and I have this Assets folder, but I need to tell my application that I'm building that I want to make use of this new asset. So I'm going to right-click on Assets, I'm going to click on Add, and I'm going to click Add Files. And now, I'm in my Documents, Projects, Starshooter, Starshooter Project, Assets folder, and it sees that player ship PNG. Now, it could be that I point elsewhere and say that I want this graphic, and I can pull it from anywhere in the file system, but I think it's best to actually include the files that you're working with locally inside of the project that you're working on. So let's just double click that player ship PNG, and now if you open up the assets, then player ship PNG appears as a file that the project recognizes. If we open up the properties tab, you can see that the build action for the player ship PNG is content and what that means is when I build this program it's going to see inside of this assets folder this PNG file should actually be content meaning I want to make use of this and what it's going to do with anything that's marked as content is copy that over into the final build meaning it's going to make that graphic available to us when we run the program. Okay, let's hide the way to properties then and get back to where we were with respect to the assets. Now what I need to do next is bring in the shaders that I have. And in order to do that, we currently have shaders called Simple, uh, FCG, and VCG, but I don't actually want to use those. I've got some new shaders that I'd like to make use of here called Sprite, FCG, and Sprite VCG. And so into my Starshooter project. I want to go into the shaders folder and you can see that the simple FCG and VCG that I've got here, I don't want to actually make use of those anymore. I want to take the sprite FCG and VCG and I'm going to copy those up and paste them here. And like I did with my assets, I'm going to in my shaders come back into PlayStation Mobile Studio and right click on shaders and add files and I want to add the Sprite FCG and the Sprite VCG. So let's add those in and I don't need the simples anymore so I can highlight those and I can remove them and I can either delete them from the project or I can delete them off of the file system. So notice the difference. If I just remove them from the project then here simple FCG and VCG still exist in my shaders folder, they're just not being made use of in the program itself. So that highlights the difference between whether the file exists at a file system level and whether they're actually being used in my project. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and delete those. We don't really need these anymore from a file system level. I can just mark those for deletion and get rid of them. I'm just going to use my Sprite FCG and my Sprite VCG. And here now they're in the shaders folder. Okay, so this is really just a bunch of setup. I've brought the player ship into an assets folder and I'm making use of these new sprite 
shaders. Now I said that in our app main we're going to make use of drawing this sprite, but before I do that I actually need a new file to manage the sprite. And I've already written that for you. It's called sprite CS. So I've got a code file here that I'd like to make use of. And so I'm going to go into my project. You can see we've got our app main CS and I just need the sprite CS to come up here. So I'm going to copy that in at the Starshooter project level. So put it at the same place as your app main CS. And now I'd like to make use of it here in my project. So it's not enough just to have it here at the file system level. I need to tell the project itself about it. And that's easy enough. I can import a new code file that maybe someone else wrote just by right clicking on the project. I can add and then let's add file, not a new file, but actually add files. And you see here that here's our sprite.cs. So let's go ahead and add that in. And now we have a new code file that I've already written and you can make use of this. Now the details of this are a little bit complicated at this point, but all you need to know is that the class sprite is going to allow us to manage a graphic on the screen at a particular position on the screen. It uses uh, shader programming, so it uses the vertex buffer and it uses all of the data about UV and texture coordinates. So all of this that has been defined here for us essentially allows us to draw a rectangular sprite on the screen at a particular position. And it also allows us to scale it and grow it and change its color and so forth. So we can make use of this without really having to understand all the guts of it. The important point to note is that I have this class sprite it manages all of this data for us, but it does have a position and we'll make use of that information. And the position is of type vector three. So it's actually got a position on the screen in X, Y, and Z. And we'll leave Z at zero. So it's always gonna be you know, at the same position away from the camera, but we'll move the X and the Y and we'll adjust where this graphic shows up on the screen. It also has a height and a width and we'll make use of that extensively as well in our programming here. Okay, you can see that we have a, a constructor and what the constructor is going to do is allow us to pass in this case a graphics of where it should be drawn and the texture that should be a part of this and it's going to draw this information to the screen and, and set everything up here for us. Right? We can set the color. This is another function that we will be able to call and make use of and change the color of this sprite. And later on down here, you can see that we have a render function. And so this sprite is gonna know how to draw itself using all of this code. And it's going to actually draw itself onto the graphics canvas that we passed it when we created it. Okay, so that's a lot of setup. We had to bring in our player ship graphic. We had to bring in the sprite shaders. And then we actually had to bring in the sprite code. So now we're actually ready to make use of it. So we'll go into our app main and we need to create a new variable to hold this sprite. So I'm going to create a new variable. It's private static and you can just leave those keywords there. But private really means that it's within this class and no one else outside of this class can see it and that's fine because I'm just gonna use it within this class. And static, since our main is marked as static, I'm gonna to have to mark this variable as static as well. I want a variable of the sprite class and you'll notice that as I started typing, I've got all of these different choices that are coming up because the development environment is smart enough to kind of auto-complete this and guess where I'm headed. So as soon as you found the right one and it's highlighted here, you can use the arrow keys up and down, but in this case, I want the sprite class and I can just hit tab to finish that off. I want a new sprite and it's going to be a variable of this type that we created here, this new class sprite. So I want something called sprite and I'm gonna call it ship. Now this ship is gonna be a variable of the sprite class and it's gonna allow me to draw the graphic onto the screen. So at this point, I just have a variable, but I need to set it up. So let's go here. I'm not gonna change anything in my main because I still wanna do my initialization and I still wanna do my check events and update and render. But in my initialize, what I'd like to do is actually set up and load the texture representing the graphic, and then I'd like to set up the ship variable. So the first thing I need to do is create a new texture 2D and I'm gonna call this T. So now I have a variable called T that's of type texture 2D. And I want to load this from the 
file system. And the way I do that is just say, I need a new texture 2D, and I'm gonna pass it the location, in this case, in my application, meaning whatever program is running right now, I wanna go into the assets folder, and then I wanna lo load the playership.png. And that is going to be the file name that we defined here. So if you had a, a different kind of graphic, a different name, you would just use whatever the file name is there. So notice that playership PNG is located in the assets folder and playership PNG here is located in the assets folder. I'm gonna put a comma here because Texture2D expects two parameters. It's gonna expect the file name and then it's looking for whether we have a MIP map or not. And a MIP map is a way of scaling graphics. In this case, I'm not using that, so I'll just set that to be false. And now I have a new Texture2D that is going to be referring to that graphic from the file that we just loaded. So this variable is called T, and now I'd like to use my ship variable. Remember we declared that here. So I'm gonna use the ship variable, and I'm gonna say that it's equal to a new sprite, and if you look at the sprite.cs file, the setup function here, the name of this constructor or this setup function is the same as the class itself. Right? We'll get more into details in that later this semester, but the constructor allows me to initialize and create and set up the variables for a new object. In this case, it's expecting a graphics and a texture. So back here in app main, you'll notice that if I'm creating a new sprite, it's looking for a graphics and a texture, no problem. We have this graphics variable that we are pointing to the new graphics context. And the second thing it's asking for is what is the texture or what is the color information that should represent this sprite. In this case, it's that texture we just pulled off of the file system for the playership PNG, and that was stored in the variable called T. Okay, so now at this point, I've got a new sprite, and what I'd like to do is actually set it somewhere on the screen. So let's make use of the position variable as part of this sprite. And I wanna set the X position to 10 and the Y position to 10. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna place it in the upper left of the screen, okay? Now, we'll leave that alone for initialize. And all I need to do is come down here into render. And after I've cleared the screen, what I'm gonna do is tell my ship to render itself, meaning draw yourself appropriately. Now it knows where it is and it knows the canvas that it lives in. So if I tell the ship to render itself, it's going to do whatever it needs to do and all that code that was part of the sprite.cs class to put itself on the screen. Okay, let's run this. And you can just hit Control F5 or F5, but let's go ahead and run or debug. And what we'll get is our red background with our sprite in the upper left. The sprite is actually measured in its upper left, so I've got a dot here about uh, right where the mouse is pointing, and you'll notice that it's 10 over and 10 down from the top of the screen. Let's uh, adjust our background back to black, so we'll set the clear color to zero, and let's move the ship to be at position 100, 100. Now if I run this again by hitting F5, you'll see that we've got our black background and we've got the ship that's moved 100 over and 100 down. So just by adjusting the position here, let's set the X position to 200, and we'll run this, and it should move it a bit further over to the right, and sure enough, there it is. All right, so we've got 200 pixels over by, two, by 100 pixels down, and we're measuring 0, 0 in the upper left of the graphics canvas there. Okay, so here is our ship that we've loaded from the screen and displayed that, we can position it directly. But let's do a little bit of math here and actually position it at the center of the screen. And we can use that by looking at our graphics and we can ask it about its screen and we can say, what is the rectangular information about the screen? And tell me what your width is. And let's divide that by two. So we're gonna place our ship in the middle of the screen horizontally. And let's do the same thing with the height and put that in the middle by dividing by two. So this is just some very basic math. We're taking the width of the screen and we're dividing that by two and that's what we're gonna set the X to be for our ship and we're gonna take the height of the screen and we're gonna divide that by two and that's gonna be where we put the Y. So let's run this 
and what we get is our ship in the middle. Now you'll notice that the upper left of the ship is actually in the middle, so this is the dead center of our screen, but it's not the dead center of the ship. So we can do a little bit of math and actually offset this and bring the ship back a little bit just by saying take from this center position and subtract the ship's width divided by two, meaning come back halfway based on the ship's width, and subtract the ship's height and divide that by two as well. So you'll notice that this command is actually spanning two lines and that's perfectly fine because we use the semicolon as the terminator for the command. So it's perfectly fine for me to actually put this on, on two separate lines. I'm saying take the width and divide it by two and then subtract from that the ship's width and divide it by two and then as far as the Y position of the ship, take the screen's height and divide it by two and then subtract away half of the height of the ship. Now if we run this, we should get the ship in the dead center, which is exactly what we've got. The middle of the ship is actually the middle of the screen. All right. I can also adjust some more information about this ship. I could invoke the set color information and you'll notice that it takes in four values, red, green, blue, and alpha. So if I pass it this information, 1001, remember this is the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha, meaning the opacity. So what we'll get here then is the ship's color will be modified so that it looks like it's uh, going through a red filter. And now we've got a red ship. So if you create graphics that are pure black and white, then you can uh, change their color just by invoking this set color function. Okay, I can also scale my ship, so ship.scale x is equal to 2, and let's see what that does if I run this. I can scale the ship in both the horizontal and the vertical, so what this is going to do is scale it and grow it by a factor of 2, so now it's twice its width as the actual graphic used to be. And I could also set the scale of the Y, and if we run this, what we'll get is the ship is now twice the size in the horizontal and the vertical. Okay, let's uh, remove the set color and the scale, so we'll just comment those out, and a comment is something that we can see but the computer is going to ignore, and we can do that with the double backslash here. And if we run this one last time, then we'll see that we've got our ship in the dead center. Okay, so very nicely done. We've done quite a bit of work in this tutorial. We imported the asset, playership.png. We brought in some new shader information. If you'd like to, you can double click on those and see the shader code for that, but we're not gonna modify that, we're just gonna use it. We then brought in the sprite CS. And again, we're not going to delve too deep into that code, but just realize that you can make use of code that other people have written. In this case, my sprite class allows me to hold the position and the scale and color information and texture information about a graphic. So now I then created a ship variable of the sprite class. And then in initialize, I created this new texture and brought that player ship PNG in. I then created a new sprite and called it ship and told it to draw on my graphics canvas using this texture. And then I set the position in the X and the Y for my ship. And then we played around with the color and the scale information as well. But at this point, we've got everything we need to draw something on the screen. We can change its position and put it at different spots on the screen. And in the next tutorial, we're going to allow you to move around and use the player's input to move the ship around the screen. And that'll do it for this tutorial.